Well, I have some good news today. Could we get a drum roll, please? Hi, it's Elise. I'm glad you stopped by. The USDA has just released their 2023 plant hardiness zone map. Now, we haven't had a new map since 2012. I did a previous video on that map if you would like to check it out. And in that video, I go into more detail about the history of the map, why it was created, why we should use it, how it can help us, some of the drawbacks, and what did we do before we had the map. This map is the same a basic map, just updated some with different values. So we go across the contiguous, contiguous part of the United States. It also includes Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico. The map is divided into zones, and the values are assigned a color, and then those colors are uh, assigned a number so that we can track it very easily. Each number has a prescribed temperature value in Fahrenheit. So each zone is 10 degrees, and then it is further divided into a half degree. Kind of neat. Let me read this to you. The USDA plant hardiness zone map is the standard by which gardeners and growers can determine which perennial plants are most likely to thrive at a location. The map is based on the average annual extreme minimum winter temperature displayed as 10 degree Fahrenheit zones and 5 degree Fahrenheit half zones. So has there been any change? Yes, there has been some change. I don't know if it's an overall change to the whole map. I know my zone changed. I used to be in 10B. Now I am in 10A. Which for me, that represents the possibility of a 10 degree warmer temperature. But remember, these are averages over 20, 30 years. So does that mean this next year I'll be 10 degrees warmer here at my location? Not necessarily because, again, it's an average. But 10 degrees is important. 10 degrees of cold weather can be the difference in a freeze and not freezing, in a frost and not frosting. I'm still going to what they call push the zones, go a zone up and a zone down. So, even though I'm in 10A now, I could go to 9A, or I could go to 11B and push all those different zones. In other words, plant plants that technically are designated for those other zones. It's very easy to do. Okay, this uh, map also is interactive, and it is an official map of the United States government. If you want to find your plant hardiness zone, you would just go up here, enter your zip code, and hit your search icon. Or you can actually click on the uh, map itself in different areas. It's really a neat map to play with. Now I'm on old dinosaur desktop computer, and if I were to click down here on the map, it would just sit. And after a while, I'd get this little comment like, you want me to do what? <laughs> anyway, the easiest way and the fastest way for me on my computer is just to open a new uh, page here on my browser and go plant hardiness zone map or plant hardiness zone 90210. I've already typed that in just so I didn't have to try to type over the tripod and the camera. And I hit my search engine, and it brought it up. So this is Beverly Hills, California. And I use 90210 because it's a zip code that most of us may be familiar with because of a popular TV show that was on years ago. So this particular area has zones 10B, 10A, and 11A. Because you can have zip codes that have more than one zone, depending upon how big the zip code area is. Now, 
Is everybody on the internet going to automatically update their information? Of course not. They may take a little while to update it or they may never update it. My suggestion is to always look at the 2023 map, the official map, to get an idea of what your planting zone is. So, how neat, folks. Check out the other video if you can. Pull this up and play with it. Lots of fun. I'll talk to you later. Have a good day.